Hi there, it's me again, uh, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So I did a video on Monday. I'm still going to keep the Wednesday, Thursday, or sorry, Wednesday, Friday schedule ongoing for this week. I just wanted to get that response video out. It was still sort of relevant in my mind, and I knew what I wanted to say. But now we're going to discuss memory. Uh, I've made a video, which I'll include in the link below, the description on memory issues after stroke. Well, now we're going to discuss something that happened to me this week. So, we all have Facebook, or most of us have Facebook, and my Facebook produced a, one of those memory things. Hey, remember this from a year ago? Well, fun fact, I didn't, and I, I hesitated for the most of the day, but what do I do with this? So, the memory was a picture of me in a, in a suit at work. Uh, I don't normally wear a suit to work. Um, going for an interview to become a manager at work. Well, that would technically have been today. Uh, and that would be 10 days before my stroke. I don't remember it. Don't remember the interview at all. Don't remember that day at all. Don't remember that picture being taken at all. Um, I have no independent memory of that day. I have no independent memory of that event. And unfortunately, the people that could help me remember that, they haven't been very, they have been not helpful at all um, in helping me restore any kind of memory of that day. Um, I asked someone at work to have a sit down with me uh, to try to remember that day. Don't think they quite understood what I was trying to accomplish. Um, they just, the short of it is they weren't helpful at all. Um, and when I told them they weren't really being helpful, they seemed kind of angry at me. Because I told them, well, you're not being very helpful. Because I'm just trying to remember that event. And I realize there's going to be a fair amount of us that are stroke folk or brain injured folk that are going to have some of these memories pop up on Facebook. And you're not going to remember them. Uh, I don't really remember about two weeks, 10 days before my stroke. Don't remember at all. Um, one of my best friends, I went shopping with him for my suit. He texted me and go, hey, not to be a dick. The reason why I say that is he's a dick. Um, but you know what? He's, he's one of my best friends and he's even a better asshole. So, um, and I'll tell you why I say that in a minute. He and I went shopping for the suit. I don't remember going shopping with him for the... I, I don't remember going to get the suit. I just know I went to get a suit because uh, it's new. I don't remember that shopping excursion. Um, luckily, people around me do. So they're able to tell me, hey, you. I remember that because you told me about it or I was with you. So it's, it's a struggle because I, I really spent... A good amount of time like hours 10 10 hours wondering should I even post anything about this so I didn't post the memory I posted the picture going hey Facebook says but I don't remember this I also don't really remember about seven eight days ten days after my stroke I can remember parts of the day from my stroke parts of it I, I don't remember independently Parts of it I remember because people have told me what has happened. Parts of it I remember the day, like I mean the immediacy of the stroke, because it was a, no, I remember that. Some of those I remember quite clearly. Um, parts of it I remember because it was a very emotional event, a very traumatic event, very, I thought I was going to fucking die. Um... But I don't remember this picture being taken. And I know there's going to be a portion of us out there that are going to be in a similar situation where something's going to pop up on your social media. Hey, remember this. Or someone's going to say something. Hey, do you remember this? Or someone's going to show you a picture. Hey, do you remember this? And I just have to be honest. 
and say yes I yes I do no I don't or there could be maybe a kind of I haven't really encountered the maybe a kind of piece yet where I think I remember something and then if I don't have an independent memory of it but people have told me about it I'm gonna say I sort of remember that event because people have told me about it do I actually remember that event no and it it frustrates people it confuses people because there are certain things that I can remember and I know I trust that memory fairly well there are certain things I remember and I know that memory might be corrupt or contaminated or confused and I'll tell people I think this is what it was but correct me if I'm wrong and for the people that know me they know when it comes to the situations the circumstances around what my world is like post stroke I don't sugarcoat anything and I don't bullshit like I, I don't I don't try to struggle through my world and bullshit people about where I'm actually at I don't try to put on my happy face and grin, bear it, smile, try to maneuver my way through it and then not admit when I'm having a rough patch. Because again, that doesn't do anyone, specifically me, any help at all. Um, I don't try to hide anything because it doesn't do me any good. Um, in fact, it might be more detrimental to do that. So, I had this interview at work, which I don't remember. I then had another interview because I wasn't successful in the competition, but it was just like a debrief. I don't remember that either. Um, and I know, for me, that's difficult. Because it's hard to have to admit it's not that I'm fallible because I'm a man I make mistakes don't get me wrong I, 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 I can make mistakes it's hard for me to admit that I'm faulty in a way and I don't mean like faulty as I'm damaged I mean like my memory is faulty and I had a conversation with someone today at work who was there when I had my stroke and they asked me what what did I actually remember about that day and I had to admit that some of the things I remember I remember because I was told some of the things I remember I remember because I, I can remember that thing um, and I remember I remember certain things about as the stroke happened now some of that could be because I was I posted more on Facebook than I would have historically because I was trying the only way I knew I could create like an indelible record for things that I'm trying to remember or things that I found funny because I found a lot of shit really funny in the hospital um, I, I'd post it on Facebook a quick little like that was funny I need to post it on Facebook now so I don't forget it um, and it's difficult to have to admit that I don't remember things it is and because people look at me like oh you must remember them like no nope, none of a fucking clue um, people ask me hey do you remember that person nope I don't know who you are uh, I don't remember you I don't know your name I don't know what relationship we had before my stroke but I'm gonna assume that if you haven't taken the time to really have a meaningful conversation with me since my stroke I don't need to know you because you haven't really been there <clears throat> so you must not be of consequence and it's it's unsettling because it really troubled me to have to wonder about that picture I know it's me in the picture that I know I know I own that suit because I've worn it a couple of times <clears throat> I've worn it after my stroke um, I know I had the interview to become a manager because I know I had that interview, so to speak. Um, I remember wanting to know just what happened in the interview. Like, not not why didn't I get the job. That wasn't the case of why I didn't get the job is kind of irrelevant because 
I had a stroke. I came back to work. You know, I didn't get the job. It, it's not so much why I didn't get the job. It's what happened in that interview. I don't remember it. Um, which makes people, I think, uncomfortable. So how can you not remember that? Well, I don't. I couldn't tell you what room in the building the interview was. I couldn't tell who, who gave the interview. I couldn't tell you what questions were asked. I couldn't tell you what, you know, with the exception of that picture, I couldn't tell you when that interview was during the day or what day of the week it was. Um, it's, it's unsettling. It's off-putting. It's difficult. It was difficult to admit that. Um, and more so, because I know more more so the people at work are going to see that photo that I'm on Facebook with, and and in some cases the people at work might might wonder, well, how can you not remember that? Well, I don't. And there's not much I can do about that. Again, I'm going to come back to the radical acceptance. There's there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, what? I take a lot more notes now when it comes to important meetings. I, I carry a notebook with me wherever I go for important meetings. I take notes when I can. I refer to that constantly because I have to. <laughs> I keep a piece of paper in my wallet with my locker number and combination on it because there are some days I'm not sure of either. Eventually, it became a rote behavior, and it just got reinforced by I kept opening the right locker. Did I occasionally forget my combination? Oh, that's happened. That's why I keep the combination in my wallet on a piece of paper. Um, I just don't know what to say about that. I, and I know there's going to be other people that are going to struggle uh, with their memories. Um, I know there's people that are going to struggle with trying to remember things. I know there's people that are going to struggle because the people around you expect you to be able to do things your brain just won't now the reasons why your brain won't allow you to have that memory is protecting you from trauma uh, and it's just something something that will eventually undo itself is it actual brain damage and because of the brain damage you just couldn't hold on to that memory it's it's hard to know exactly right? and, and I'm, I'm not going to speculate it's just, I accept the fact that I don't remember that. It's just, it's not there. I know, it took me a couple of months to be able to come to grips with the fact that I don't remember certain things I probably know I should. I just don't. It's taken me about another month beyond that just to accept the fact that things are different. Things are going to be unique now, and you just have to be honest with what your reality is, you know. You just have to be honest and accept the fact that things are different, that there's nothing you can do to change it. If the memory comes back, it comes back. If the memory doesn't, it doesn't. All you can do is find people around you that you truly trust. Go to them and go, hey, do you remember this? Please tell me about it. Right? And then try to find another person and do the same thing. And then eventually you'll be able to collect enough information to create a memory, so to speak. Uh, but keep in mind the memory that you've created is based on the observations, perceptions, and, and, and biases of others. So it may not be the way you would remember it, but it is what it is. After, the, after having a conversation with someone at work about the meeting, I still don't remember a thing. I, I doesn't, the, 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 the information I was given was unhelpful we'll just leave it at that so for those of you like myself in a post-stroke or post-brain injury world there's going to be difficult times when you have to deal with your memory 
and how your memory might impact other people. Um, I know people have told me, oh, you know who they are. I'm like, no, nope, I don't know who that person is. Oh, you know who they are. No, I don't. Well, you remember them. No, nope, I don't. Well, you'll know who they are when you see them. No, nope, still didn't. So for those of you that are around someone that's either had a stroke or a brain injury, don't try to tell them what they do know and what they don't know because nothing makes me want to tell people exactly what I think of them in very nasty, bad language than when you tell me what I should know or what I shouldn't know or who I should know or who I shouldn't know when you try to contradict me on what I know about my reality. That pisses me off. It's just a thing. Now, let's get back to my friend who's a really great friend, but an even better asshole. His name is Dave. I've known Dave for a good number of years. Uh, Dave actually, I work with Dave, and he actually came to Emerge to be there when I was having a bad moment. Showed up in Emerge, and I do remember he threatened to get me a speak and spell because I was stuttering pretty heavily. Um, still have yet to get said device. Maybe one day he'll get it for me. Um, but that's just the sense of humor him and I share. It, it very dark, because things look pretty shitty at that moment. I also needed pajamas, uh, because no one shows up to work expecting to need pajamas, uh, because you're not expecting to go to the hospital. Well, Dave went and purchased for me. Actually, you know, I, I paid for it. He just completed the transaction, a pair of women's 2X pink plaid pajamas. And I still rock those every day that I possibly can. So, fortunately, that's a memory that I'll probably never get completely out of my head, but that's okay. So, on that note, for those of you that have had a stroke or a brain injury and you're going through some throes of memory issues, don't get discouraged. That's a thing. For those of you supporting someone going through the throes of a post-stroke or post-brain injury world. Don't try to tell them who or what they should or could be able to remember because you're not helping. Don't, don't try to tell them, though, oh, that's something you should know or you should remember that. I still have moments where I remember things, but I don't have the context behind it. I still have moments where I should know something but I know I don't at that moment. I can't recall it. And I still have times where everything works perfectly well. I'm still in the grips of trying to deal with all of that so I can just piece it all together. In time, it'll become less of a struggle. In time, it'll become less of an effort. In time, it'll just be part of my world, and, and I'll just accept it a little bit more readily than I am now. So on that note, if you happen to have been enjoying the channel, over the last 11 months, coming up almost on 12 months, um, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone going through their own post-stroke journey, please point the channel out to them. If you know someone supporting someone going through uh, a post-stroke journey or post-brain injury world, please point the channel out to them. They might get some benefit out of the content. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone appears to be befuddled, confused, or has lost their sense of balance, someone has vision problems, they can't see it in one eye, excuse me, they only see in grayscale. They can't move their eyes in a certain direction. They only see a little dot in the world. Someone has facial droop. There's a noticeable, visible slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all. Someone who can't smile equally, effectively, or at all. Someone has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Someone has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has an inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.